worship center and uh, even after the meeting uh, of Roy and we all went to the hotel there also almost two hours uh, the Lord used him for the family sharing the word of God and he is a mighty counselor and the Lord is using him across the globe and he studied uh, in Spain and in Italy and in France three years in UK and 15 years in Singapore and back again in uh, Texas University for the last uh, four years and Lord is using both of them. His wife is also in Texas University and his brother, uh, parents and uh, all are in Spain. His in-laws are in Singapore and they are in USA and he is with us. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! A powerful man of God with uh, a great ministry and uh, with uh, great enthusiasm for the last couple of years. And days we are together and he never take rest until and unless he finish his duties, ministries. Right now, I think uh, you yourself are for uh, will invite. Uh, right now, on behalf of the ARC, I welcome Dr. Hector Ramos. Please come forward. And please come to And uh, we will be really close at 825, please. Since I have come here, we always have an issue with time. <laughs> I'm so glad that my God is the God of eternity. Amen. I usually take about one hour to preach, and uh, sometimes I go one hour twenty minutes. But people enjoy it, so and those who not do leave politely. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I have to confess uh, something to you, and that's that uh, even though I've been called a doctor over the last three uh, uh, days, uh, like 200 times, <laughs> the fact is that uh, I'm still in my last year of my PhD. Uh, I passed pass my brilliant first exam. Now we have the methodology, second exam, and then we'll have the defense next year. Now, I, I received this thing about Reverend and Doctor all that prophetically because I need God's help for this to happen. But I have to clarify something with you, is that uh, even if I had three doctorates, it doesn't mean a thing. Because one could be in petroleum engineering, the other one could be in mathematics, and the third one in sociology. So what am I doing here with those things? Do you want to know about petroleum engineering? <laughs> so the question is, what is the credibility that I have here to speak with you? And I only have one thing, and that this is the thing, that I've received certain invitations from people from this part of the world. And I am into missions. I have nations in my heart. You invite me tomorrow, I go. But then I have to submit to God. I have to tell God, God, you tell me where you want me to go. Because it is, there's a cost involved. There's a price to pay when you go to a place. So there was a moment where I received some finances and then I got this invitation. And then I asked God, God, do you want me to go this time? I said, yes, go. I don't, myself, I don't like to go to a place for four days, that, from Texas to Dubai, four days only. I prefer two weeks. That is my, and if you talk to a lot of pastors, they will tell you the same thing. It makes sense. That's what they do. But I said, God, I will do it for you. So if I have any credibility, is that I know that God has sent me to speak in Puerto Rico. That's the only thing. And if you receive that in the Spirit, you will be blessed. Amen. Because Jesus said, the same way the Lord that my Father has sent me, I send you. Now, he just didn't mind what the price he had to pay to get to places. I'm so glad that our brother shared this um, testimony, preaching, and exhortation. <laughs> because that's what the Lord was telling me about, to share, about peace. So this is a confirmation. Amen. But first, I want to share one thing with you. I want to share certain parts, certain gems. The first one is this. It's a prophetic word for you. Shyness will not get you anywhere. If you want to do the will of God, you have to break the chains of shyness. Now, if you are shy, the way to do, or you are intimidated by people, the way to do it would be ask God for boldness. Because 
Many people in the past, they had the same problem. So what do they do? Just pray. We all pray, God, give us boldness. But give us boldness to do what you want us to do. Alright? That's the number one. Because you're going to need the boldness to do what God is calling you to do. And what is that? To break from your cultural identity and step into Cornelius' house. What is Cornelius' house? Cornelius' house is an uncomfortable place. Why? Because they have a different culture. They could come, they could be from Africa, they could be from the Philippines, they could be from many other nations. You have them everywhere. They could be Russians. And you need to step into the household and to bring the good news. And expect the Holy Spirit is going to fall. Okay? So this is, this is the commissioning for you. Because God wants to do, through your generation, something that other generations have not been able to do. Amen. To show that He is the God of nations. And He says, I want them to be one. It's very difficult for people to be one if they don't know how to relate to each other. So, you may need to learn how to relate to each other here. If you are in the ark, and the ark is called an uncomfortable place. Okay, you just take a cruise for 40 days <laughs> and then see, but don't take the most expensive, just get a small boat. And then you will find that it's an uncomfortable place. Now, you go with some friends and then see how you share your experience. Usually when people go through uncomfortable things, they get on each other nerves. It's like, when do you put the water? What do you do? See, a lot of people they just get irritated when they go under this type of things. Well, that's what happens in the church. But what we do is that we go meet together once a week and we say, God bless you and we pray for you. We have very superficial relationships. Uh, but we don't want to repent of that because that is very comfortable. I told my church in Brian, it is very comfortable because at a distance I don't need to deal with my issues and your issues. Because when I get close to you, you see my defects, I see yours. Yes, that's the problem. But we should not focus on the defects, we should focus on the strengths of each other, on the blessings. Because you have a talent, you have a faith, and we are here to bring that and be a blessing to each other, too, so someone, can, someone else can get a breakthrough. I'll uh, bring you some revelation today. From the book of Ephesians, it says that the, the, the fivefold ministry, fivefold ministry that is apostles, prophets, teachers, anybody else, evangelists, and pastors. What is the work? The work is not ministry. Okay, I have to say that again, so it will be ingrained in your mind. The fivefold ministry, ministry is not, the work is not ministry. The work is training. Who does the ministry? The body of Christ. But they need to show how to do it. So if I'm an evangelist, I will evangelize and I'll bring you with me. And I'll tell you, you see how I share? Now you go and do the same. If I'm a pastor, I deal with a pastoral issue, and I say, well, are you a pastor in training? Come and see how I do it. If I'm a teacher, I say, well, this is how I teach my children. Go in your house and do the same. Good. You need to learn not because of what people say, it's because of what they do. You cannot see what they do if you don't get close to them. So, get close to your pastors and to your leaders. And ask them, what is the price you have paid? How do you do what you do? I want to do the same. Because that's what Jesus did. Uh, Jesus didn't wait like three years and then say, well, let's go and baptize because now you know a lot of theology. He said, well, you don't know a thing, but I'm going to baptize, so you join us and you baptize with me. Is it written that they baptized, that the disciples were baptizing with him? No, it's not written, but then read the Bible. Because it says that the disciples were baptizing people with Jesus. Jesus was baptizing. John the Baptist was baptizing people. Jesus was also, and the disciples also. <coughs> wow. Assignment for you. I like to give assignments because if you do the assignments, this was the point of sharing a lot of work, half an hour, and then you do nothing. Assignment for you. 
read in the Gospels, let's take at least one, take Matthew, and read, look for this. What are the disciples doing? Are they only listening? Are they people they're going to church every Sunday and they're only listening, they're doing nothing? Or what are they doing? How are they learning? How are they growing? And the question is this, has Jesus changed the method? And the answer is no, he has not. I didn't mean to share this thing, but the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you. Because he has a great plans for you. But you need to know how to grow in the Spirit. Good? This man, you're a pastor. But has anyone told you that you're a pastor? Nobody. But you behave like a pastor. So you pray to God. Because I can see that you have people in your hearts. You have a great concern for people. And you really want to uh, them to experience what you have experienced. That's why you don't share your testimony with very little words. You just share it with all the passion. That's what your testimony becomes, it becomes a sermon. And it happens every time. Because it's burning in your heart. Because you want to impart what you have experienced. You don't want people to know about. You want to, them to experience the same thing. That's called impartation. Okay? And I think that every one of us should be willing to do the same. Let us not just be nice to people. Let's go to one another and say, what can I do for you to help you grow? <laughs> because you have a little bit of faith. I have a bit of faith. We all have a bit of faith. When we get together, it adds up. So your faith plus somebody else's faith, you get the miracle. Okay? Jesus said to a woman, your faith has made you whole. He did not say, I have such a great anointing. I have such a, done so many works. I've raised the dead. Hallelujah. I have so much power. That's why you are healed. He did not say that. That's what a lot of pastors say. Oh. But he said, your faith. Now, what is, what is the meaning of your faith? That means that, woman, the Holy Spirit is dealing with you. She, uh, the Holy Spirit is doing something in your heart. And the Holy Spirit has led you to do this so you could receive this. The Holy Spirit has opened the door for your miracle. That is what Jesus was saying. Now, what that, was that a woman, a theological trained doctor or whatever? No. She was like one of us. She was only, what, what did she have? She was desperate. She had to prevail. That's the only thing. But she, what, who, what am I talking about? The woman with the issue of blood. Who, uh, what did she do? She, become, she became uncomfortable. She took a risk. She was not shy. If she had been shy, why Jesus is there? I'm here so poor. Oh, self-pity, self-pity. You miss your miracle. But she said, if I touch him, now, I have to push my way, and these this men are strong, and I'm not supposed to touch them, I'm breaking rules, I'm pushing people, how rude, I'm willing to be rude to touch him. Wow. So, what do we read afterwards? People were coming to Jesus. Two? Touch him and they were getting healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who got the breakthrough? A lady who had no shame. Amen. Just read a sermon for the ladies. Uh, just read in the Bible, the New Testament, the Gospels. What is the relationship between the ladies and Jesus? The ladies got a lot of blessings, a lot of breakthroughs. God has the same thing for you. Disciples, they got a lot of teaching, but they didn't get the pressure that the ladies got. Why? I just want to give some questions. I will not give you the answers. <laughs> but maybe they could be available on Facebook. Let's get in touch with me. I have two sermons, by the way, before I forget. Time out. Commercial. The website houseofgod.info. Information. Houseofgod.info. There are two messages there. I advise you to listen to them. One of them is the power of the offering. The second one is apostolic principles of sowing. If you listen to them, they are with those as well. And apply what and do what it says, you will get your financial breakthrough. There is no doubt. There is no doubt. But something has to happen. 
this one has to happen. I'm going to rush like crazy, it doesn't matter. We will get the loss. Your wallet, your job, your finances, that has to stop being that. What do I mean? You need to surrender everything to Jesus. People say that the wallet is the last thing that gets saved. <laughs> the Lord told me, whenever you give me everything you have, even if you have twenty dollars, you are in abundance. Because they are not yours, they are mine, and I have the power to multiply them. And it's so it's so relaxing to say, oh, now I, I don't have to trust money because it's not mine. Why should I trust something that's not mine? I better trust God. <laughs> I don't have anything else to trust. It's very to say, trust God, trust God. But then, oh, you have both the financial struggle, and then you, your peace is gone. <coughs> I believe that you are getting a lot today. I believe that. Okay, so there are two things to uh, let's talk a little bit about peace. God wants you to know this that you will overcome with the peace of God that He gives you. But how can you get your peace? How can you get your peace? Anybody? I just want you to think. Let's think how you get your peace. Jesus says, I give you my peace, isn't it? Jesus is the one who gives it. So I just say, thank you, Jesus, for the peace. Yeah. See, there's some things that we think we have to do, like 60 days of fasting and prayer and all this. No, just like a little child. Jesus, I cannot do it, but you can. Uh, before coming here, saying, I did the same thing. I cannot do it. I don't have a message, but you have a message. You give me a message. I have something I want to share, but I give you priority. You change the message. You do whatever you want, but you speak to people. Because I know this, that one word from God will change your life. Amen. A thousand words from me will give you, give you the same. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then we come to um, Matthew 8. Matthew 8. And what happens? That Jesus says, Perfectly, you don't have to go and read the whole thing, but, but just to remember that Jesus says, let's now cross to the other side. They take a boat. They, go, they want to go to the other side, and Jesus says, let's go to the other side. That's the word, okay? That is the prophetic word. What is the prophetic word? What God has spoken to your life. So if God tells you, if God tells you, I want you to be a pilot, I want you to be a doctor, that is, becomes a prophetic word. That is God's destiny for you. You need to know your God, your destiny. And if you don't have a prophet around, just ask God to speak to you and to confirm it. You need to know what God wants you to become, what, what, what is the ministry he wants you to do. You know, the problem we face is this. In the contemporary Christianity, we want to be all filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill me, fill me, fill me. But God is saying, I'm filling you, but what do you want to do with it? Look into the scripture. They said, we have to challenge Father, help us. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit to do that challenge. So, in filling the Holy Spirit has a purpose. So what is your purpose? All right, so now, when you know your prophetic destiny, let's go to the other side. There's going to be some obstacles. The storm is coming. And the disciples panic, but Jesus is sleeping. How can I? Jesus can sleep in this town. That is ridiculous. It cannot happen. It has to be supernatural peace. Wow. No. They woke him up and said, so this is happening in the storm. So Jesus says, oh, great. Thank you very much for the information. <laughs> you little faith. What does it mean? It means, I told you, we will go to the other side. That is the prophetic word. The storm comes, don't worry about it. Tell to the storm, I don't care about you. You yes, you are for somebody else. The storm is coming that way. And don't pay attention to the storm. Just pay attention to the word. The storm, when it says, you're not paying attention to me, will go a different way. Yes. You understand? Yes. When you pay attention to the word spoken to you, the storm will have to go somewhere else. Yes. Because the storm is looking for your attention. 
Don't compromise. It doesn't work. Amen. Sometimes the Lord will speak the same thing through two different voices, so He will stick to your heart. Hallelujah. So, what happened to Peter and all these people? They were panicking. Ah, but then we see in a different scripture, which we now go to uh, Acts, Acts uh, 12. And if we go to Acts 12 and verse 6, I will read it for you. It says, But when Herod, Herod was about to bring out him out, because he was in prison, what happened to Peter? Peter is in prison. Who wants to be in prison? Nobody. But what happens to him? Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, all with two chains and sentries before the door, guarding the prison. So, this is the thing. Peter, before, was in the, in the, uh, the boat, isn't it? Panicking. But now, after Pentecost, after the Holy Spirit, he's sleeping. Two soldiers, chains. What a comfortable way to sleep. Do you want to buy some chains and sit dry if you can sleep? <laughs> Why could Peter sleep? Because he had special peace. Yeah. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. He had a purpose. And he said, it doesn't matter. Now, from the cross, at the cross I was afraid of dying. Now I died to death. I'm not afraid of dying anymore. So what can these people do to me? When, when he was completely, when he despised the prison and all that, he said, I'm just so happy that they decided that uh, I'm so powerful and the word of God is so powerful they just want to put me in prison. Thank you. I feel good. <laughs> and then go to sleep. But that is, had something to do with God's solution. So you are peaceful. And then what happens? Oh, the Spirit is coming. There's an angel. There is someone that's going to break that prison. And he's going to bring you out. And you have a testimony. Because your prophetic word has to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, peace in you will release the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to have, you know how to tap into that. Do not pay attention to circumstances. Where does your reality come from? It comes from heaven. Your will be done, your kingdom come. Where? First it has to come to you. From you, outside. Do you understand? So if you pay attention, seek the kingdom of God first, all the things are going to line up. All the things need to line up. Because you're making a point. And the Father knows. And the father is saying, you are my son, I'm going to take care of you. You are my daughter, I don't know how to take care of my mom. Amen. Challenges do not come to destroy you. They just come to help you grow. Because if you don't have a test, if you don't have a test, you don't have a testimony. And if you don't have a mess, you don't have a message. I, I learned that from a preacher. <laughs> Learn how to tap on God's presence, mm. on God's word. When circumstances come, do not meditate on them. Like, how am I going to get the job? How do you? How am I going? I cannot. I think I can get the job. You get three-hour meditation on why twenty reasons why you don't get the job, and then eventually you do not get the job because you <laughs> prophesy the whole thing yourself. <sighs> so meditate about. No, this is what I'm going to get because God wants me to get it. So meditate about God, you are so good. Yes, God, thank you so much. I'm getting it. I mean, that's, that's how I receive all these doctor things. Doctor, this, doctor. You think that I like that? I don't. I, because that doesn't define me. It's not doctor, this or that. It, I'm son of God. I'm in Jesus' club. That makes me happy. That's why I'm coming here. That's why I, I said, he says, my father says, yes, go. And I, said, and I go. That's the only thing. Because if I don't obey him, I don't have a message. If I go on my own, I don't have a message. There is a price to pay. I have five minutes. And I'm going to tell you one more thing. Hallelujah. I'm excited. <laughs> and it's going to go on for another hour. <laughs> I have to be even very for that. The second, we need to release the power of God. Because everyone, would, when they say power of God, they think healing, deliverance, hallelujah. There is much more. There is the peace of God. What else? The love of God, the love of God inside of you, express it. And now it's going to release the power of God. How can you do that? Why 
and simple way. Because you have decided at the beginning of the sermon that you're going to give the, your finances to God. Now, now, every time that you give something, you are not giving it. It's, you are giving it on behalf of God. It's not called spending, it's called sowing. When you give, you when you go to a restaurant and you give a tip, you don't give a tip. You sow a tip. Oh, that's pretty good because that, that releases the power of God. He says that he will multiply your sin. Which means that if I'm going to a restaurant, and for instance, I buy a soap, and the soap costs me five dollars, and I want to give a tip of ten dollars. Then I tell the waitress, this is for you, can I pray for you? Because God will multiply this seed to meet your needs. That woman is going to, or that man, they are going to be touched. Because that day, I tell you, nobody bought something and gave a tip more than the, the one they bought. That week, nobody did it. That month, nobody did it. Use your money to bless people, to show into people by prayer, believing that God, believing that God will multiply and will bless them. That is an instrument of love. It's an instrument of God's love. You don't give money, you give faith. But you use that prophetically. I just give you this. Sometimes when I was pre prophesying for people, I prophesied, God is going to give you this, or God is going to give you a financial miracle, and all these things. And then eventually it says, God said, so what are you going to do about all these prophecies? So I get some money and I say, and by the way, this is seed to get it going. <laughs> you understand? Let's pray. I have 30 seconds. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brothers and sisters that have received this word of power. And I, Lord, have great expectation that they are going to put these things into practice and that the peace of God is going to release your power so that the storm will be stopped, the, the prison is going to break. That when they love people by sowing into their lives, your Holy Spirit will bring that offering and will touch their hearts and they will be open to the gospel. Let every single time that they sow, be a message from God, a message from you, because it's your money, Lord, it's your finances, but we are only stewards. So we sow them into them, we love them, we love them. Help us, O oh Lord, help us, O oh Lord, to surrender everything, because we know that you will provide for every single of our needs. Father, help us to focus on your kingdom first, first, and that, that will transform how we see ourselves. We are messengers of the kingdom, and because that's why we best find our times thinking and meditating and speaking about. Messengers of the kingdom, let everybody here become that messenger of the kingdom that goes to Cornelius' house, to that family that looks different, that do different things, but we will bring a blessing there and the Holy Spirit will fall upon that family. Let it be fulfilled according to your word of God, as we have received this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stand on our feet. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As we have been hearing this very prophetic word, hallelujah. I mean, Jesus, let's submit ourselves, uh, ourselves completely into the hand of God, Lord. Uh, I mean, Jesus, give me the boldness, Lord, for the Lord, hallelujah. Many times I've been so shy, Lord, for the man, Jesus, hallelujah, where you expected me to be bold enough to speak. Uh, I mean, Jesus, hallelujah. Let's submit each one of us, hallelujah. Let's submit ourselves to God, Lord, hallelujah. All the shyness that I have, Lord, hallelujah, where I'm not able to speak about you, hallelujah. Many situations that you have given to me, Lord, uh, there's so many good opportunities that you have given to me, Lord, but because of the shyness, Lord, hallelujah, because I was not bold enough, Lord, for the name Jesus, hallelujah, to speak your word, Lord, for the name Jesus, hallelujah, and to share, uh, to share the, 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 I mean, Jesus, what you have given the experiences, Lord, hallelujah, let's submit ourselves so that we can have the boldness, hallelujah, and I mean, Jesus, hallelujah, and so that we may not concentrate, we may not meditate on our problem, uh, and, and meditate on the Lord Almighty Jesus, uh, meditate on the peace, Meditate what God has given in our life, hallelujah. And then, then, then meditating on our problems, hallelujah. I mean, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, hallelujah. And as, as we heard, hallelujah, let us sow, hallelujah. And let us sow what God has given to us, Lord. I mean, Jesus, whatever blessings, whatever blessings that God has given to us, Lord, hallelujah. Let us submit ourselves completely so that God can use our friends.
finances, God can use our talents, God can use our time, God can use everything that we have so that we can do that. Let the name of God be lifted. Hallelujah. Once again, we serve each one. Hallelujah. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ, let us pray together once again. Hallelujah. Our most precious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for this wonderful time that you've given to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for speaking to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. This time we surrender each one of us, Lord. We pray, Lord, Father, in Jesus, for your boldness, Lord. We pray, Lord, Father, in Jesus, that each and everything that we do, Lord, help us so that we can do it, Lord, Father, for you, Lord. Help us so that we can come out of our comfort zone, Lord, Father, Lord, Father, Lord, Father in Jesus, and Lord, and so that we can help. We can go and speak your word, Lord, Lord, Father, yeah. even the situations are uncomfortable, Lord, Father, in Jesus, Lord, yeah. even the boldness, Lord, Lord, yeah. we completely surrender each and every body into your righteous, Lord, Father, God, let your plans be fulfilled, Lord, Father, let your will be done, Lord, Father, in Jesus, Lord, yeah. help us so that we can stand for you, Lord, Lord, yeah. Amen. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, we surrender the man of God, Lord, yeah. head to almost into your righteous, Lord, we pray, Lord, Lord, yeah. Lord, Father, we speak your blessing upon him, Lord, Father, God, wherever you take him, Lord, Father, in Jesus, let your will be done, Lord, Father, yeah. use him mighty, Lord, Father, we pray for standing, Lord, for the God, we speak your blessing upon them, Lord Father, in Jesus, hallelujah. We also pray for the church that is ministering, Lord Father, yeah. Lord Almighty Jesus, you bless that church, Lord Father, God, yeah. bless his ministry, Lord Father, in Jesus, glory, hallelujah. We also pray for Dr. Stanley, Lord, we pray, Lord Father, we speak your blessing upon them as a family, Lord. We thank you, Lord Father, that we would able to hear such a wonderful touch on the for his son, Lord Father, we pray for especially for his son, Lord. We pray that you may use him mightly, Lord Father, God, hallelujah. Help him so that he can stand as a testimony, Lord, hallelujah. Lord Father, man, hallelujah, in Jesus, and lift your name, Lord, hallelujah. We pray, Lord, for them in Jesus' glory. Lord, that to start it off for them in as he's traveling so many places. We pray, Lord, for them in your protection be upon him, Lord, Lord, upon his family, Lord, for them in Jesus, all the ministry that he's doing, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your anointing be, let your blessing be upon them, Lord, for them in Jesus, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for them once again for each and everybody here in this place, Lord. We pray, Lord, for them in this coming week be a week of victory, Lord, for them in Jesus, hallelujah. Every hurdle that we may have, Lord, for them in hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, glory, so that we can scale every wall, Lord, for them in Jesus, hallelujah, and lead a victorious life, Lord, Father, hallelujah, and help us so that we may not compromise the peace that you have given to us, Lord, hallelujah, and he can help us to stand for you, Lord, hallelujah, amen, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, hallelujah, once again, we send each one of us into your might, yes, Lord, Father, God, be with us and lead us and guide us, Lord, we ask this prayer in the name of Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen, amen, the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore, amen, amen. amen. God bless you, all and also like to thank